get back on the subject of a discipline issue, what do you what do you feel like as a solution for? Yeah, because you can't do corporal punishment, right? Can we not? Are you sure? I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I mean, you could when I was a kid. Yeah, I got spanked, <laughs> I got spanked by this. Yeah, I didn't need it, so I don't know what was wrong with you kids. <laughs> I got spanked once, and it was for laughing. Like we were laughing. She told us to stop, and then we laughed again, and we went to the principal and got a spanking. Probably Aww. shouldn't, shouldn't right? have laughed in her face. <laughs> I mean, and then Taylor, <laughs> and then Taylor can say shit like, "Your breath stinks. Get out of my face!" And, she, and then the teacher calls her mom. Does it? <laughs> I know. Right? Is that what her mom said, or what you said? That's what her well, mom said. What her mom said. Oh, oh my goodness. That would be that would be my first thought. I'd been like, <laughs> okay. I mean, I wouldn't want you in my face either. You, you got some stank breath. I don't know. I don't know that there's a solution to the discipline. Honestly, I. Welcome to the Blue Lounge Podcast. Come spend some time in our idiocy and feel better about yourself. Let's get started. Hello, and welcome to another episode of... Fuck this shit. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> to the Blue Lounge podcast, also. Hold on, let me finish sending this deck. Right. <laughs> now let's start. Now it's no, it's life. already started. <laughs> now, now let's do it for real. That's already in there, motherfucker. It's staying. <laughs> Fuck this shit all up. <laughs> all right, so we brought Kim, who's a teacher... Again. She's a Welcome, She's Kim. A Hi. Hey. Hi, Miss Kim. Hi. Hi. Hi Ms. Kim. <laughs> do you do you, you sound apple? like a kid. You want an apple? I love apples. Thanks. <laughs> do you want a soda? You, you want a soda? You want a soda? <laughs> I'd rather have a soda than an apple, actually. <laughs> what about margaritas? We all have margaritas. I'm uh, kidding. I think we actually no. do. Margarita. I'm Never. kidding. Yeah, let's see. No, we have, so we how, have a so margarita. How long have you been a teacher? Uh, 18 years. 18 years. Moldish. Oh, fuck it. What do you teach? Who do you teach? I currently you don't have teach to say what middle district. school kids. Yeah. And I currently teach STEM. And prior to that, I taught middle school kids technology. And prior to that, I taught fourth grade and third grade math and science. And prior to that, I taught elementary kids technology. And we all know you've forgotten your math skills, so... We'll just leave that I had a out. great math teacher and not a good banker in Monopoly. That <laughs> <laughs> is not the same thing. <laughs> we did not play Monopoly in third grade math. Wasn't a lot of Monopoly. In, not in a lot of Monopoly. Elementary. The state doesn't have that as a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a standard. So how was it during like COVID? How good, bad, and different? All the, all the good, um, bad, fun things, terrible things. Uh, well, something that was great was you had really small class sizes, so you had like half as many kids in person. You got to do stuff from home. So you could actually do stuff. Did you do stuff in your PJs? I worked my butt off, but yeah, there were people on my staff that showed up to staff meetings in their uh, robes, and then there were the people who didn't show up. You could go, you could go full Pooh Bear. Just wear it just... Full Pooh Bear. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The kids, none of them had their cameras on, so who knows what they were doing. They weren't even sitting at their computer. Yeah. No, they weren't. And I have seen a lot of ceiling fans after that year. A whole lot of ceiling fans. So a lot of kids just were passed. Did, did you Absolutely. guys, your district do that? Absolutely. I think districts all over the state did that. All over Probably the country. All over the country. Yeah. yeah. I have a student who was in France at the time, and he said that their education was amazing. Interesting. I don't. It, I don't doubt it. I think Europe is like above us and a lot of that stuff. Out that we don't. Yeah. What are your complaints about the education system? <laughs> <laughs> is this a nineteen-hour podcast? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, my complaints about the education system: um, too many kids with one teacher, so class size is probably my biggest complaint. What is your class size now? I have thirty-five kids every hour. How every many would you minutes. like? No more than 26. Why is 26 the number? I don't know why. <laughs> You're I mean, like, 25 I mean, that's better. a pretty specific number. So well, I, I had asked my principal. You're like, 27 is just a bit much. Yeah. 25 is a little too right. little. 25 is not enough. <laughs> that's right. So 26 sounds like a good 26 number. 26 is perfect. <laughs> I, I think it was in a conversation with my principal. She was asking how many kids I would want to have because I was telling her that she's got to cap it, that they can't have these huge classes or good teachers like myself won't be around. 
And she said that, you know, well, okay, well, what number would you have? And I was like, mm, 25. And she's like, mm, you're not going to get 25. And I was like, okay, 26. And she's like, mm, so, you know, it was questionable at 26, but 25 was an absolute 26 no. didn't get a no. So, yeah. But 25 <laughs> did. So, 26 Got is it. a magic number. <laughs> Understood. So, she set that number, that was basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, other than class size would be obviously discipline everybody knows that but i mean there's only so much work that so many people can do there um there's state laws about what you can do for discipline and how many times somebody can be suspended and how many times somebody can be in trouble and those state laws definitely uh limit consequences which causes crazy behavior um i don't know what else oh too much work not getting paid after hours pay as a is a big thing. Not getting paid I well mean, to begin with. Yeah. But requiring us to work after hours for free is How do they require you? It's part it's other jobs, other duties as a sign. Oh. That's so but that's we're this, also I hate that statement. So we're just now learning about the grievance process. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all suckers yeah. and we all love our kids and we all love so we're like, oh, okay. as I'll say, they say teachers don't do it for the paycheck. So. Yeah, we're suckers. We're like, oh, I'm but sure. you've done it in the private district, and I've never been in a private district. No, I've always been public. Oh, I thought you did private school. Private school doesn't pay as well as public school. Really, it's I assumed they would pay concept. more than. Not, I haven't. Huh. I, I haven't looked super far into it, but from what I've seen, no, they do not pay better. Now, maybe some of the like Catholic private schools probably do. Like Bishop Lynch, in the more affluent does. areas, yeah. So you're doing STEM now. You like it much more. I know you yeah. do robotics. Yeah, robots are cool. STEM's cool. So what kind of plants do you teach them about? Plants. <laughs> <laughs> Specific plant stems. We or... learn about photosynthesis. <laughs> <laughs> photosynthesis. Um, photosynthesis. Mm. Yeah, oh, mean... it's cool. It's fun. So what does STEM stand for? A science, technology, engineering, and math. <laughs> And so we make rockets and we make little box cars and we fingerprint things and we learn how to do CAD and we do structural engineering and well, do cool. robots. It is. Cool. I mean, I wish I could have taken that yeah, fucking robotics course. We didn't have that cool. shit. Me too. Me too. <laughs> that would have been really cool. Would have been so cool. My STEM class was taking apart my radio. And That's my right. And we took apart our own electronics and got back together. Shop. We did have wood shop and metal shop. <laughs> taking a, taking apart your own electronics and then having stuff left over yeah. like oops oh, <laughs> don't know oh, where that went <laughs> that still happens <laughs> yeah definitely so have you seen some of the tiktoks about this teacher reads like some of the things that some of the crazy shit that parents have asked her mm -hmm. did you get some of that stuff um i don't know i i get i mean let's just say yes like parents will ask for like some one things like one was to remind her to remind her kid to bring her gym gym clothes to yeah. school and it's like but she if she has gym right. every day right. for one why does the teacher have to remind you to remind your child well, right you, then <laughs> as a teacher shouldn't she, she just like, respond with well you have an alexa in your house right like you yeah, have right? a reminder for yourself very good. Have point. Alexa remind you. Why you well, you should have just said, "Well, who's going to remind me to remind you?" Because <laughs> that's what he says every time I ask him to remind me of anything. <laughs> Middle school parents are much easier with stuff like that. Elementary parents, I mean, they definitely ask for some stuff like that. Definitely. Can you put sunscreen on my child before you go outside for recess? I mean, I can see where they need some sunscreen before recess, but I mean, we have thirty children, so well, that's not true. Elementary, you got like twenty-four. We have 24 children. That's a lot of sunscreen. That's not enough. There's only 20 minutes of recess. I mean, it's time to come back in, kids. You're all lathered up. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. By the time you're done, it's over and yeah. everybody's pissed. Yeah. Because they didn't get to do anything. They didn't get to play. They didn't get to hit each other. You don't, they don't allow dodgeball anymore, huh? Mm, not necessarily. Because, you know, kids are mean. I'm like, hey, that peg the hell out of people. At least in our generation, kids are fucking mean. That rubber ball taught us a lot. I bet. You had your friends and you tried to hit them the hardest. <laughs> I played middle school dodgeball a couple years ago for like some fundraiser that we did, like teachers versus kids. Holy cow, those boys throw that ball hard. Like, <laughs> it stings. It hurts. Like, I, I thought I had a broken arm for a minute. Like, my dad, do I need to go to the ER? Oh, I'm just out. Okay. Rough. So now the big question, college, worth it? Maybe. 
Maybe. Depending Maybe. on what you want. What do you guys think? Maybe. I didn't go to college. I mean So should others. I feel like I feel like it's an individual decision, but it's I don't feel like it's completely worth the money that you pay. Definitely expensive. I I feel like I, I feel think, like you should lean more towards or at least give more options cuz like right now it's like push college push college and they should give more options like vocational classes and you know cuz those jobs do pay a lot like a welder would get paid a lot um a lot of car mechanics depending on what you do get paid a lot Oh, yeah. So I think I think those things should be pushed as well. Oh, I, I think it as with anything else, it depends on what you do with it, right? So like if you go to school and you go for computer science or computer technology, like you, you probably end up working in that career career field, right? Yeah. But if you get an English literature major, unless you teach English, there's yeah, really not nothing anything. that you can do with that with that degree. Right. Yeah. So you spent all this money on something that's practically worthless in the job market. Right. Well, so I agree with both of you, actually. So college depends on what you're going to do with it. If you're going to be a nurse, then go get your degree because you're going to go straight to work. If you're going to be an engineer, go get your degree. You're going to go straight to work. You're going to be a teacher. Go get your degree. You're going to go straight to work. But like liberal arts, what are you going to do with it? Yeah. Uh, Corporate communications, which is what my degree is in. I couldn't find a job or figure out what I'm supposed to do with it when I'm done. Like if it's a very specific training, then I think college is worth it. But But I think colleges are supposed to have those career they help you find careers or you know at least guide you I think that was the intent but I think yeah whenever you get that. your degree they're supposed they to no. they were supposed to i don't think they did it when we went to college mm-hmm. either so it's something that they were supposed to do right. but never did yeah i think i think that's also somewhere where uh like overseas europe they have they have that up on us as well because once you get out of high school you can go straight into the field that you mm-hmm. want to study we make people do for a more well-rounded yeah, for student. more well-rounded student. But I, f- I feel like people don't, uh, even when you learn it, you don't care. Right. If it's not. Well, you should be able to just go why. into what you want to go into because then you get tired of college. I mean, you should just be right. able to do your four years and what you want or however long it takes you to graduate. I don't know. They do four years, I think, it overseas. Depends. Oh, I have no idea. I thought you meant here. Yeah, Sorry. Um, I don't know what they do overseas. I last know. time but, I was in France. <laughs> <laughs> but but I know they can at least just go straight into the classes for what they're wanting to do. Mm-hmm. Like if you want to be a doctor, you just go straight into those, which is what I would prefer we did. But their college and whatnot is already paid for. So, right. It's a different system. Yeah. Well, you had said that you feel like colleges push too much. And so the kids that are currently graduating and have been graduating for a while, that is a very true statement. No longer is it true because STEM is pushed greatly now. Like college career courses are big in schools now. And the state of Texas actually has requirements and accountability based on how many of your kids get certifications in different fields while they're in high school. So like while your test matters and while your graduation matters, also what matters is how many kids got certified in electrical and electricity, how many kids got certified in finance, how many kids passed this certification and what did they leave with? So they actually are pushing careers big. And what you call vocational school, they're pushing that a lot now. And lots of districts are getting grants and money to pay for these impressive buildings that have all these courses that are taught where you can learn to be a dentist and you can learn to be a nurse, be a paramedic, be a firefighter. I mean, teaching this in high school. So they're graduating high school already knowing already knowing how to do this stuff. And they're impressive classes and they're impressive buildings. So it's happening. The change has happened. Just got to give it a little time to actually, you know, get a and few groups of kids through it. You do like a like a city school, like not. I guess what you say we do public, so I guess that yeah. would be like a school district, a regular, because they didn't do that shit when I was young. No, well, no. Schools, schools changed a little bit since. A little yeah. bit. No, I didn't. I mean, I'm only we twenty, kids. so it's hadn't they, changed that much. They, yeah, <laughs> they were teaching us how to run from dinosaurs and stuff. So. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> they had some of it though they had they had cosmetology but do they have then. like economics classes because like i had to take economics yeah, we all it's still a requirement for graduation and like it government. taught me that back then i needed to make 18 dollars to live the way i wanted to live 18 dollars an hour yeah that was back then wow. which was a lot <laughs> and that was actually just for normal shit so i know that that's gone gone up now just a little just, just a tiny bit 
I used to do this website with my classes at my old school that it's a free website for the state of Texas and the kids have to go through and pick, you know, what kind of vehicle are you going to have? What kind of home are you going to have? Who are you going to live with? Are you going to have children? How many kids are you going to have? What degree are you going to get? How are you going to pay for it? And they go through and pick all that. And then at the end, it tells you how much you got to make a year. Same idea. Well, at the end, they get to it. And it's like, I need to make $324,000 a year, miss. And I'm like, you need to go back and edit some of those because that's not <laughs> happening. Well, that that's funny because there was a, a guy on the street talking to, um, I don't know, just random people. And he asked these girls how much money they needed to make to kind of have like a normal life, like just normal everyday life. And they were like 500,000. And I was like, holy shit. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, wow, you're shooting for the moon because you might, you might want to. Reel it in. So. Reel it in a right. bit. I heard, I heard some woman say um, that I think it was two hundred and two hundred or two hundred fifty thousand dollars that you're in the top one percent at two hundred two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Now you're not really? the top one percent of one percent, which is the money that we're actually talking about that we're actually all that everybody's for, swearing to. But you're you're in the top one percent of wage wage earners at two hundred fifty thousand oh, wow. dollars a year. Have you seen the TikToks where the guys, there's several different people who do it and they go around. They're like, how much do you make? How much do you make? What do you do? Man, I don't like what street he is does, he on? Yeah, he goes around the rich street. Like he goes to people with like Lamborghini cars. Yes. And he's like, so what do you do to get this car? <laughs> yeah. They make so much. Yeah. I mean, he went to one guy's like ranch house. The guy was selling it and he was like, you want to, the guy was like, sure, come on in. You want a tour? And I was like, how do you like? who just randomly let some person tour their house just because he's asking you how you got what you have. Cause he's doing a TikTok. Mm -hmm. TikTok is key. Yeah. YouTube. YouTube. Do you TikTok your robotics things? No, I don't. I should. If I was younger, I would. I, I, I've gotten a little You act old like you're old, busy. motherfucker. Well, 18 years in education is a long time, but I'm just too busy to TikTok it. So I'd have to go home. And TikTok it, and I mean, you know, there's only so many hours in the day, and life balance is very important. You'd right. have to edit when that shit. At, when you're not at work, you're you're not you're not thinking about work, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you can. I used to, but now I go home and go home, or else I yeah. have a really cool I TikTok mean, channel my with some wife, really cool STEM stuff on it. <laughs> my wife would used to be that way. She would live to work basically, and. When she met me, she learned that that's not a thing you should do. Yeah. <laughs> it's more fun to spend time with yeah. your spouse. It's more more fun to You're not going to start living your life fun. when you turn 60. When they say you can finally retire. So, 60? Well, right. I guess we will be retired by 60, but the vast majority aren't. Right. Closer to 70. Retirement age is now, what, 60? 66? 65, according 60. to... Oh, I thought uh, it was 68. I thought it just actually went up to 67, so... <laughs> I think it did go up. Well, they're talking about making it go higher, or at least. Yeah, I think someone said it. Yeah. Put it at seventy. They're gonna have to. Yeah. How are you gonna yeah. afford this? Seventy's yeah. old, though. Like, I was about to say, died at seventy, can and you, he was an old man. Can you think of like Nana's in her eighties? You think like ten years ago she could still be working? Right. Wow. Or here's another option, and we can have. Uh, these corporations that celebrate their ten billion dollars at revenue year year revenue by giving their employees yeah. cookies, free pizza, free pizza. <laughs> Here's a watch. How about you actually uh, help pay for the, retirement? Spread the wealth around a little bit. Well, I know, so, mom. Whenever uh, she reached her what, like a five year anniversary, she got this little fucking clock. Right. And I was like, oh yeah, yay, thanks. <laughs> God, yeah. I worked so hard for so long. I yeah. worked so hard for you for to give me a clock. For a fifty dollar clock. We get like right. a little pen that's like the size of a penny. Like, I mean, I, maybe people wear them on their lanyards or something. I'm, I mean, thank you for the gesture. At least they do something. I saw I saw a thing the other day that like the the younger generations are are saying that loyalty to a corporation is dead. Like loyalty to your job is not a thing mm -hmm. you should do. That you should change your job every couple of years. Yeah, I heard mm -hmm. that. And it's I'm true. Well, yeah, but you say that, but some companies see your work history and see that you change jobs every two years and they won't hire you because right, you don't have same, longevity. At the same time, in the interview, you can address that, right? Like, so I would work there for two years and at, at my at my last performance review, they 
they said that they were going to give me a 3% pay increase. And I'm talking to you right now for a 15% pay increase. That's true. Well, and supposedly that's our generation that thinks that that's a value of be of loyalty. So the millennials and the next I mean, yeah, I kind of have a problem. So I don't know why. They're not going to ask in an interview. I know my company is not loyal to me. So why am no. I loyal to them? Right. Uh, it, it, the day you die, they're going to post that job interview the next mm-hmm. day. Yeah. So that job listing the next I day. I mean, mm-hmm. I asked them if I could go remote just to move, uh, but I still wanted to keep my job. And they were, they said no. And I was like, well, fuck me. Okay. <laughs> Got <laughs> it. Right. Never mind. Understood. I thought, I thought that was like a small thing to ask. And they were like, fuck you. But you could have asked for a watch and they might have given you. They one. probably would have given me a watch <laughs> much faster <laughs> for sure. That have been no. That have been like. Have you been here for ten years? Right. Uh, you've only been here seven years. <laughs> you've only been here seven. That's so not watchworthy. <laughs> We're gonna have to say no to the watch. You're such a new. How you about that. no? I, I feel like. Uh, have you seen my stapler? The office comes into this right here. They see my stapler. I don't remember that guy's name. I see the my stapler. They said I could keep my stapler. All right. <laughs> It's a good movie. It's a great movie. It's quoted a lot. Yeah. Well, so to get back on the subject of a discipline issue, what do you, what do you feel like as a solution for? Yeah. Cause you can't do corporal punishment, right? Can we not? Are you sure? I'm kidding. Um, (laughs) I mean, you could when I was a kid, I got spanked spanked by this. Yeah. I didn't need it. So I don't know what was wrong with you kids. (laughs) I got spanked once and it was for, laughing like we were laughing she told us to stop and then we laughed again and we went to the principal and got a spanking you probably Aww. shouldn't, shouldn't right? have laughed in her face <laughs> i mean and then taylor <laughs> and then taylor can say shit like your breast stinks get out of my face and, she, and then the teacher calls her mom does it <laughs> i know right? is that what her mom said or what you said that's what well, her mom said her mom oh oh my goodness that would be that would be my first thought i'd been like okay <laughs> i mean i wouldn't want you in my face either <laughs> you got some stank breath i don't know i don't know that there's a solution to the discipline honestly i i mean from one perspective the state can't the state shouldn't limit what we can do in a classroom what we can do an entire school system based on you can only be suspended 10 times or you can't be suspended at all because you're under this age. Well, like what about when a five-year-old throws a desk at a teacher and injures her, which happens often? Like, so what, we can't suspend that kid? Ed, weren't you telling me a story about some teacher that got her arm broke by a student oh, yeah. and then the student was back like every the year. next week or whatever? Every year in every school district. Like, how is that not assault? In- right. So... Anyways, outside of that, I mean, the phones and, God, and the goodness. generation these kids live in, I mean, the discipline's going to continue to be a major issue. We weren't allowed to have phones, even, I mean. We, they, cell phones didn't exist when we were kids. You could have brought out your briefcase and folded it out <laughs> and gotten out the car they phone. Came, they came out when we were, like, they. I mean, they were huge. When we were in high school. They were yeah. huge, but they, I mean, they yeah. came out. Like Zach, Zach it, Morris, is it, is it that different from the size phone you have now? <laughs> say by the, say by the bell, Zach Morris had that giant oh, phone. You remember yeah, that? Those, the that's what the size. Yeah, he was so hot. <laughs> that was the size of the phone. <laughs> it was. You couldn't stick them in a pocket. Yeah, couldn't hide them. Well, well, you. I had a phone. I mean, I had a prime cell phone, and <laughs> but you couldn't do anything on it. So who cared? I mean, it was yeah. awesome because you could call me, and my parents couldn't listen to our conversation. You could play Snake. Uh, it, right. <laughs> you could play snake. I forgot. I forgot. Snake There's is no not... reason to pull it out in class. Snake. <laughs> also, what are your thoughts on the uh, on the voucher program? I do not know my thoughts on the voucher program. Actually, explain what's a voucher program. So instead of uh, <laughs> your kid having to go to the school down the street because they live there, mm-hmm. because they live there, uh, the school gives you your kid a voucher where you can go to any school in the district of your choosing. And then that huh. voucher goes with them to the school. And that's how the state pays the school for attendance. Is it even I for poor not kids? I think that's what the voucher program is. That is not my understanding at all. What, do you, what is My it? understanding of the voucher program is that the state takes your money. Let's say it's $5,000 that the state gives the school for, for each child, okay. which I believe it's like six or 7,000 per child. But let's say it's 5000 So the state doesn't give that 5000 to the school because 
the kid is not going there. And the parents get to take that $5,000 to a private school and pay the private school. So it's about taking kids out of public education, putting them into private schools. Oh, I didn't realize it was that. A better opportunity is the theory. Hmm. I thought, okay. So, so then why do some school districts not allow you to go to Does it even do it for poorer school districts? Well, those are just totally separate things. Separate issue. um, The reason, I don't know the reason. I mean, in my opinion, the reason would be because planning. Because the bus doesn't run there. Well, for one. So, so the so does that like because it's it's for every every school like every school child, right? So I assume so. Like even your poor school districts, where you have your poor students, they get that same opportunity. So that's the sales pitch of it, and I haven't done the research to know all the details on it. But there's a limited number of vouchers available because the program would only be so funded. Yet this program hasn't even passed although the governor is standing very hard on it and says he won't pass anything else until his Congress passes that. So, or his house, whatever his people hmm. pass it. But I don't know the lim- the number of people that would get to do it. But you know, when you think of a poor school and you think of, well, let's not call it a poor, poor school. Let's call it a school that has a lot of problems. And that does not ne- mean that it has to be rich or poor in terms of money. But when you think of a school, that has got a lot of problems and it's a little bit dangerous and you think of your child being there and you think of the opportunity to take your tax money to go to a better place you can definitely see that as a big positive when you think of who's going to select who these kids are how do you get to be that kid how do we keep it equal how do we make it where it's actually an opportunity that somebody deserves the opportunity for how do you decide what's deserving i mean there's so many pieces and yeah. they say that often it goes to kids that are already in private school so they're already there just now they're not paying 10 grand now they're paying five grand so more or less their family's getting a five thousand dollar coupon every year when they were already there so that's like what the naysayers against it say Hmm. but i haven't done a lot of research on it i I think a positive is that it's going to force some change and i think there needs to be change in education so i think that forcing change is a good thing but i don't know that that's the correct change to make but you got to mix up the system somehow. What about like the uh, we can, What about like the privatization of school? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the solution. I just happen to work there right. and be amidst it. I mean, I I don't know how to fix it. But I mean, if I was around some good-minded people who have ideas, I could work with them, have ideas and come up with great solutions, but I on my own am not able to do that. Right. I don't have the magic fix. Hmm. There's not a magic fix. No, there's not. Gotcha. Fun time. Fun time. It's fun time in education. Sounds like it. It still has all the great parts, though. It's still fun. We laugh all day. I mean, we still have a lot of fun. They still learn a lot of things. There's a lot more problems than there once was. Do you think it's better or worse from when we were children and went to school? I would assume that it's worse. I, I mean, I find it much worse now than it was well, 10 don't years don't even ago. say from when we were in school because she was on the other end of it yeah so like from when you were when you first got into education to now it's gotten rougher and rougher is she technically a millennial technically i am a millennial technically, mm. yes. by like a year it depends on which list you look at on when she when she i mean if you look at it gen, like our gen generation gen hits the zennials huh no we're we're gen x and every I know, and but there's a, a the sub generation is Zennial, which is X and Millennial, and it hits I forget what the seventies uh, year uh, it is, but it hits seventies to eighties, I think. Mm-hmm. Right. So that would make us technically either Gen X or Zennial, if you believe there's a Zennial. I, I think that there are so, there are some people that fall into uh, that don't really that would fall into both categories, correct? Well, I don't think that my people fall into the millennials, but now that the millennials have gotten a little older, I kind of like them. They're kind of cool now. Because they've learned some shit. year old millennial is like, oh, man. Yeah. Now they've seen some shit, so they know. Yeah. When they were 25. Woo, they were special. <laughs> now they're trying to own houses, and they're yeah. realizing when they do own a house that it's a lot of fucking work. Yeah. And and I don't kids. want to own a house anymore. Yeah. What are they doing with my tax money? Like, yeah. Fuck. I remember being 25 and my older friends making fun of me and being like, oh, just wait, just wait. 
your opinions on everything are going to change when you start realizing the amount of money you put into taxes. And boy, were they right. The longer you send your money to taxes, the more you're like, well, this is ridiculous. <laughs> well, I know. Well, if you think about it, your your company is taxed or you're taxed whenever you get your your check from work. You're taxed when you buy anything. Mm-hmm. You're taxed if you give your money to some, depending on how much you give. I read a, I read a thing. Uh, I think it was a department. And of- then you pay a tax at the end of the year. Like how many times is that one fucking check taxed? Mm-hmm. I read a thing saying that the average American is tag- taxed 50 cents on the dollar. So mm-hmm. half, half of what you make goes to the government tax. Yeah, we should do something about that. Yeah, we should. I you, feel you, like. You think that there would be a lot more uh, availability of programs and systems. It makes me want to look into you. those people that say um, that it's illegal for, for the government to take your money in taxes. Like, because you never agreed to it. It's not something right. that you, ha- I'm like. It's a voluntary system. That it's a voluntary yeah, system. I'm like, but yeah, you can go to jail for not paying them. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm like, I want to look into that and see what the, what that the loopholes are. Or saying that. Right. What's Probably. wrong with that? <laughs> that Nothing is, necessarily. They, I mean, maybe I feel like it's a thing world. to look into. But, but yeah. What, what I've learned since uh, helping my mom with her taxes, she's 72. And so she's retired and man, who do you pay some taxes when you're retired? Like they freeze your property taxes. So you, they, she pays three grand and we pay five grand. Ours will keep going up. Hers will stay three grand. So like that part's nice, but man, the money you take out of your 401k one day. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. They don't tell us that when they're like, oh, pay into your 401k, make yourself rich in retirement. Yeah, see, that doesn't no, make any sense because you're taxed on the money you put in the 401k, yeah, so you've you paid taxes. That goes in is oh, that's true. Yeah. It is. Which sounds great at the time, but you, what yeah. you don't realize is when you're bringing the money out and you're 72 years old on a fixed income and you have to pay $8,000 on your annual taxes, you're like, wait a minute, I don't have eight grand. It would have been better to tax it before it went in. Right. Yeah. When it went in twenty three dollars at a time, and now it's coming yes, out exactly <laughs> twenty three at a time. Maybe don't tell them about our retirement secret. <laughs> they don't need to know how much is in our account. Thank you for joining us in our idiocy. That was education. We're failing on and Binks of the Blue Lounge Podcast. That's our show, and thank you for spending time with us. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow us on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Until next time.